I learned I had cancer in a, a non-traditional way. I was down at Station 8, shadowing the shift commanders, learning how to do the staffing in the morning. And uh, Kevin Fellers walked into the office and had some packets with him. And didn't, no one really knew what they were. I'd heard a little bit about it, but uh, it was for the cancer dogs that can detect cancer in your breath. So we thought 15 bucks, it might have been 10 bucks at the time, but regardless of the cost, um, I'd, I'd like, to, like to know one way or the other. And uh, so everyone in the office took the test. Um, month went by, nothing happened, and that's, that's supposed to be good news, but uh, after about a month and a half, I got the news from Jim Tate. He's, he uh, told me one morning that uh, the dogs had, had detected some sort of cancer in, in my breath. Um, so at that point, you go through the process again. Um, the person running the program is very dedicated to the science behind it, to helping the people that are involved in the, in the program. I spent a couple of hours on the phone with him and uh, you, you retest to confirm that it was not a, a false negative or a false positive. Um, and uh, at that point, when the dogs reconfirm it, you're, you're, uh, you're sent on a, on a hunt. You know you have something in you, but you don't know where or what. Prior to the dogs letting me know that I had some sort of cancer, I had, I had absolutely no symptoms. I was concerned about uh, how, the, how it would affect my family. Um, my, wife and daughter, my friends, and uh, actually the, the, how it would affect every aspect of my life, uh, specifically the duration, and uh, it was yet to be announced. My family was uh, very supportive. Um, they were concerned, but um, they stood by my side through the through the, the research and the testing and the, the many doctor's visits. Um, but we decided, oh, hopefully she's not watching this, but my 11-year-old daughter st still doesn't know to this day. I'm in the process of getting a second opinion right now. Um, my, and that is a, it is a it is very good advice to get a second opinion. I, I am looking at UT Southwest over in Dallas because they're recognized as, as one of the two best places in the state, if not the country. Initial doctor is, um, has done a, a very good job of um, battling it and I currently there's, there's no, the treatments that I was given, the last time we checked the, the tumor had not returned so that's good news. I kind of, I'm a little concerned about getting a second opinion because I like the first opinion. But that's, in general, you should always get a second opinion and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to do that also. Initially, there was, there was treatment involved in trying to figure out specifically what type of cancer it was. Um, there, I went through a, series of tests you just you're on a what you might call a wild goose chase but you know there's a goose somewhere so i went to a dermatologist uh, and had a colonoscopy went to obviously my own family practitioner i had a via scan over in las colinas i did i was just looking for everything i could do to to find out you know, what the dogs had detected um, and then in an unrelated, I was fortunate enough to have had a back injury, so in an unrelated MRI of my back, the, uh, the scan just happened to hit the right side of my bladder, and the radiologist just happened to be paying attention that day and noticed a worrisome growth, which normally I may not have followed up on, but since I was 
in the process of looking, I went to a urologist and uh, while I was at the urologist, he's, uh, you know, he's got a scope in the most direct route he could to, to my bladder and um, we're, I'm telling him, I'm laying there talking to him, telling him a story about the dogs and uh, he, he looked up at me and said, the dogs were right. believe that my cancer is a direct result of the job, the um, exposure that I had to smoke and carcinogens at fires and um, just some bad practices that I would like to see corrected and for future firefighters and this we could start as soon as right now. With the workers' comp, fortunately I had Robert Webb to blaze a trail ahead of me. I was able to follow in his, um, his footsteps. I submitted hundreds and hundreds of pages of proof that my bladder cancer is related to the, the chemicals and the products of combustion that are involved in firefighting. I, I was initially denied, as anyone will be that goes through this process, but um, you, you jump through the hoops, you just don't, don't give up. Um, I made, spent hours on the phone, um, but eventually they accepted my claim and that uh, makes a huge difference. It, it saves, it can save you a whole lot of money. Cancer can be very expensive. Um, also, fortunately, I had an, uh, a cancer policy. Mine was through Aflac. There, there are many different types, but that um, it's not, and it sounds like good news, but it, it paid for itself that, you know, that day. I'd like to see all firefighters treat fires more like a hazmat scene to reduce their exposure to the carcinogens that are produced in modern day fires. Keep your SCBAs on during overhaul. Do a decon on scene immediately and then follow up with a more detailed decon once you get back to the station. Stay clean and live healthy.